Animals and um, yeah, the, a lot of the work has been shared on We Animals, incredibly important and powerful stuff. So please give a warm welcome and a huge round of applause for Amy and Paul from Moving Animals. Hi everyone, uh, thanks for coming out to listen to us speak. Um, this is Amy, Moving Animals photographer, and I'm Paul, and I take all of our footage from Moving Animals, and together we started a journalism project called Moving Animals. Um, so we first met a few years back uh, while working for people for the ethical treatment of animals. Um, Amy worked in digital production for them, producing and editing all of their videos, and produced their marketing content as well, and I worked on the corporate team behind the scenes, researching and working with companies to persuade them to move towards more vegan practices. So asking food companies to add more vegan food and fashion companies to drop leather and fur. Um, it was during our work here where we saw firsthand the impact that visuals were having on raising awareness for animals. And so we were started to we were inspired, rather, to start documenting the lives of animals ourselves with the intention of getting their stories out there to the mainstream media. Um, so one of the things I imagine a lot of us here as vegans can probably relate to is how differently we quite literally see animals compared to other people. We see them as individuals who are sentient and not just commodities that people can use for profit or entertainment. And I think that's one of the things that really, really drew me to using photography as a form of activism, because it is quite literally about how we see animals. And um, so I read this quote from the documentary photographer Lewis Hine. He said that photographs can light up darkness and expose ignorance. And I think this is probably one of the reasons it's used across so many social justice movements. So you see it used in environmental social justice movements, you see it used in human rights and stuff. So, sorry, I'm a first time public speaking, so I've got my notes. But, um, so. <laughs> from exposing what actually happens behind closed doors to capturing moments that actually encourage people to view animals as the individuals that they are and to also have empathy for them. So this is what we try and do with our Moving Animals project. We photograph and film the animals who are being exploited by humans. So we document the animals who are used for food. So. This is an image of a cow who's being used by the UK's dairy industry. Like a human mother, a cow cannot give milk unless she first gives birth, and so she is repeatedly impregnated year after year. Her calves are taken away from her just a day or two later, and it is traumatizing to them. So when taking these photos, I could hear the mother cows calling for their calves the whole time. And their female calves are raised in the same system as their mothers, and the males are either killed at birth or sold for veal as they're considered worthless to the industry. And these images were only captured a few months ago. And so the animals that you are seeing here are likely still in these exact same conditions as we speak. Three trillion fish that are killed for food every single year as well. We document them. As you can see, like the numbers are just astronomical. Yeah. We document the animals used in the pet industry. So you can see here an image of a fish. This was documented, this was documented in Vietnam, and this was a motorbike that just had bags and bags of fish just hanging off the side. We document the animals used for scientific experimentation. So this was taken at a breeding farm where macaques are bred and then transported all across the world for use in experimentations. 
we document the animals used for fashion. So these are actually silkworms and in the silk industry, silkworms are actually bored alive so that their cocoons can unravel and then we can take the silk from them. This is an example of a leather tannery. I don't know how many of you saw the speech yesterday about fashion, um, but there's also uh, so many human rights abuses that happen in the leather industry as well. If you want to learn more about that, I recommend going to Peter's website. They have a ton of information on how the leather tannery industry is exploiting people as well as animals. The animals used for work. And the animals used for entertainment. So this is a photograph of jars in Vietnam where these are animals in jars of alcohol. And this is completely like fueled by tourism. So us, essentially, when we, when we go to places like Vietnam and we want that thrill, that exciting thrill. So in this photo, you can see snake heads or snakes, uh, shark fins, birds, scorpions, all these different kind of animals who are put inside these jars just so that we can get a thrill. And we also document the more positive side of things. So like the activism and the future of food, for example. So the best way we believe to help fight against the injustice that is happening to animals is to try to sway public opinion. And so we, our work revolves around ensuring that our visual content is covered in some of the most engaged with and far reaching platforms. Um, we started our work with an initial grant from the Cultural and Animals Foundation, which helped kickstart our work. And Moving Animals has since grown from a side project into a full-time mission. Um, we've now documented at over 75 locations across seven countries. Um, it's always a bit uncomfortable talking about our um, achievements, but I think it's important to show just how powerful and far-reaching these visuals can go um, in the hope that they do change people's minds. And so um, our stories and photographs have featured in more than 150 major media outlets worldwide, including The Guardian, The Independent, um, Channel News Asia, and our investigative footage has received over 25 million views. said to freeze something in time. It immortalizes it so that it becomes evidence of a crime. And as we know, animals are facing violent criminal acts every second. Crimes that their legal system don't even deem crimes yet. Um, but it's a really ex exciting time for animals in photojournalism. Um, for me personally, I was really inspired to start this work by other photographers in the movement, including Gerard MacArthur, who is the founder of the animal uh, photojournalism uh, photo agency, We Animals Media. Um, she's been a major influence for sure on this kind of work. And Trasmus Muros, the project Trasmus Muros is incredible. Like, highly recommend you check out their work. It's just so incredibly powerful. And Andrew Skoron, who is a Polish photographer and investigator, and his work has spanned so many different industries. Um, also massively inspired, of course, by the investigators who themselves are very talented photographers and filmmakers as well, but who remain in the shadows and anonymous to bring these sort of horrific things that are happening to us so that we can share them and get them out there and try and create this change. And recently, as more and more photographers have started to pick up their cameras to try and tell animal stories, this kind of photography has taken form and structure through the classification of animal photojournalism. So it's a really exciting emergent genre of photography. It's technically a new genre of photography, and it's coined by the photo agency, Joanne MacArthur's photo agency, We Animals Media. And I just want to read you a brief summary of their definition, because they can do it much more justice than I ever could. 
So animal photojournalism is an emergent genre of photography that captures, memorializes, and exposes the experiences of animals who live amongst us, but who we fail to see. At its core, the images in this pioneering field document the broader human conflict and its resultant ecosystems of suffering. Like photojournalism and conflict photography, animal photojournalism often takes the form of an in-depth reportage or photo essay. It's relevant to current news and it shapes conversations about its subject matter. And this surge of support, this like new surge of support for animal photojournalism has also recently been elevated thanks to the new book, Hidden. Um, many of you may have seen it. It's been really, really, really popular in the animal rights movement as a way of sharing these photographs. Um, so it's a book of photography about our conflict with non-human animals all around the globe, as depicted through the lenses of 40 photojournalists and forwarded by the Oscar winner and animal advocate, Joaquin Phoenix. And it was a huge honor to contribute some of our photographs to this book. And we're so excited to see it as a field continue to grow, as more people pick up their cameras. If any of you want to pick up your cameras, if you like photography, it's, it's a really exciting time to get involved in this movement. Um, and yeah, I think it's really powerful that it continues to grow because photos don't just show the physical violence, which we've all seen, they can also show the emotional violence, which in turn can increase our empathy for animals as sentient beings, when we acknowledge that this emotional violence is happening. So this photo is part of an essay series that I did a little while ago called Next in Line. Uh, I have included all the photographs in here because I thought they were maybe a little bit too graphic because they depicted quite a lot of slaughter. Um, and I, if it's okay, I just want to read you the uh, caption for this um, photo essay. So, farmed animals endure so many acts of physical and emotional violence throughout their short lives. There is the physical suffering, such as the painfully cramped conditions and the horrific slaughter process itself, and there's the emotional violence, like being forced to witness the death of others, something that many of us, as human animals, are very rarely exposed to. And these images, or this image in this instance, portray this emotional violence as a moment in time, one where the animals watch the death of another individual, likely with the understanding that they themselves are next in line. So if you'd like to see the full photo essay, you can head to the International Vegan Film Festival's website. Um, I'd now like to share a story with you about one of the many animals that we've met along this journey so far. So um, this is a little baby elephant called Dumbo who we met while we were documenting the animals confined to a zoo in Thailand. You might be able to see from the photo that he was skeletal. His body was practically a skeleton, the state that he was in. And he was forced to rave, move right to music, and um, play musical instruments and perform tricks, all for tourist entertainment. So all for people who maybe have gone along to Thailand and want to experience time with wildlife for an elephant. Um, and we watched as tourists laughed and they took selfies or this emaciated baby elephant stood with his eyes closed just quietly sucking on his trunk which I later learned was something that they do when they're not with their, their mothers so that they can be comforted and we were obviously naturally really moved by his plight and so we nicknamed him Dumbo and we started a petition asking for him to be retired to a nearby reputable sanctuary. The response to the photographs and footage of Dumbo was overwhelmingly powerful, like positive, and showed, really showed us the impact that visuals can have. So we had journalists all across the world really wanting to tell his story, and so many emails from the public who, again, personally just wanted to ask how they could help this baby elephant. And over 200,000 people actually signed a petition to try and get him released. Within a week of Dumbo's story going global, he was visited by government officials who found him to be skeletal and in desperate need of medical treatment, so they ordered the zoo to transfer the elephant to a nearby elephant hospital. And with the power of so much support behind him, we were really, really hopeful that we'd be able to secure his permanent freedom. But in a devastating turn in events, he passed away before he could be rescued. He'd been suffering from a digestive tract um, infection, basically, and he was so neglected and he died while under the so-called care and treatment of the zoo. It was, it was pretty tragic. He, I didn't know whether to go into the details of his death, but 
essentially he was he was so he was so thin that his his whole entire body just collapsed it couldn't support what we were doing to him anymore and we we really really hope that dumbo is now finding the peace that he was so cruelly denied in his lifetime we talk about One of the reasons we talk about Dumbo um, as an example is how an animal story can engage and connect worldwide audiences to speak out against injustice. Um, but the tragic images of Dumbo also show how photographs can document a story that otherwise would have gone unnoticed. Um, they immortalise a crime that has occurred and they become part of the progress and efforts for change to stop exploiting animals for entertainment. So as an epilogue to Dumbo's legacy, we are really happy to say that Tang Mo and Sang Mun, the two elephants forced to perform alongside Dumbo, have actually been rescued thanks to a wonderful elephant sanctuary called Elephant Nature Park. And the entire zoo that we documented Dumbo at is actually now closed down too. With All of the remaining animals at the zoo, including the tigers, the bears, and all the many others, have moved, been moved to reputable sanctuaries in Thailand. I don't know if many of you saw the tiger photo at the start, but that was one of the tigers. And I heard from the sanctuary the other week that when she arrived at the sanctuary, she spent six hours just in the water. She, you know, she'd been tied to a stone podium, and she spent six hours just in the water, just cooling down. It was beautiful. So finally, we'd like to introduce our brand new photography archive, um, published this week and can be found at movinganimals.org. Um, the archive is a continuously growing collection of over a thousand images um, that are all free to use for organisations, activists, social media platforms and media outlets. So if this includes anyone here, uh, we really hope you can find it useful in your work uh, on, in fighting on behalf of animals. Um, for every photo shoot, um, we also have accompanying footage um, that we don't publish on the archive, but we can provide if you reach out to us. Um, we're really proud that these images so far in the archive have been used by lots of activists and charities, including the likes of PETA, um, Humane League, uh, World Animal Protection, and Viva, and many more. Um, the archive itself is also a space to record and bear witness to some of the concealed horrors that are happening to animals around the world. This has been our journey with Moving Animals so far and we're really looking forward to seeing the archive continue to grow as we learn more about how we can best document and share the stories of animals. Um, it is an incredibly exciting time for this field, so if you have any interest at all in picking up a camera or your phone and using photography or footage as a tool for animals, we really encourage you to just go for it. Um, we didn't know how this thing would turn out, but we just wanted to, it was an idea we had and we just wanted to go for it. And our first media hit actually was something that we filmed on my phone, um, so I'd really encourage you to go for it. Um, and remember, it's not just um, slaughterhouses and farms that you can document. Um, you might have an animal sanctuary near you, or perhaps a local activism group that is doing really great work, or uh, doing exciting protests, etc. And documenting all of these things really helps build the movement. Um, it records history, and it's really important to share our victories and our progress and positive stories too. So thank you for listening to us talk today about how photography can be an incredibly powerful tool when it comes to advocating on behalf of animals. Um, we hope you find it interesting and a huge thank you to Vegan Campbell and Viva and Andrew for making you know all of this possible. So thank you so much. Thank you very much.